Okay, so before we start, hopefully this is a good symbol of India and Bangalore. Is it? Great. <laughs> okay, hello everybody, my name is Krzysztof Czajka and I will talk about two things today. Feedback and candies. I work for the biggest e-commerce company in Poland named Allegro, where I have been a scrum master and agile coach for more than four years now. An important part of my job is to do experiments to change workplace for better. Therefore, I'll talk about such an experiment I did in Allegro in 2013. We are all here because agile means something for us, even if sometimes a slightly different thing. But we know, all know that feedback loops are of paramount importance in Agile. Special kind of feedback loop is peer feedback. It is special because it's about people, it's candid, authentic, and not connected with hierarchy. And it directly impacts employee engagement. There are many proofs of that. Let me mention just two of them. In the well-known Gallup employee engagement survey, one of the 12 questions is, during the last seven days, I have received recognition or prize for doing a good work. And those who answered yes work for successful companies full of engaged people. The second example appeals to me even more. US Department of Labor says that 64% of working Americans leave their jobs because they do not feel appreciated for what they do. And since people are the most important part of every company, peer feedback as part of company's culture can directly impact its competitive advantage. But we do not always know how to do it, how to make peer feedback part of company's culture, how to make it both frequent and valuable. And this is what is my story about. I'll talk about the game before, because in fact this is a game and I'm sure that some of you will be inspired to try similar at your workplaces. How I know this? Because this is simple, yet powerful. And although it was run in a big corporation, it fits company of any size. It can be a small startup, a middle-sized company, or a big corporation. So let's start. I'll first talk about the reasons behind the experiment. Then I will explain simple rules of it. We will see some tweaks to, that we make to make this experiment even better. Then I will answer a question how I knew it will be a success before we launch it in the entire company. Uh, some lessons learned and examples of the best feedbacks people got in this game. So back in 2013, there was a very heavy system, in pl bonus system in place in Allegro. People were, people were saying that it has a lot of drawbacks. And I asked them, they said that in particular, it took, took, no, uh, it took them an extra week every quarter to fulfill demands of this system, quite a lot. It was based mainly on management opinion. Bonus was always expected, but the bonus shouldn't be expected, right? and it took no soft side of performance into account. So I looked for alternatives, and soon I came across Married Money by Jurgen Apollo, and it actually addressed all of the drawbacks of our existing system. In particular, it took no special effort rather than one week every quarter. It was based on peer feedback rather than management opinion. Bonus was unexpected, not so obvious as in ex an existing our, our existing system. And it took collaboration and soft side of performance into account. So let me now just explain simple rules of this game. We have to use our imagination. So imagine this is Monday morning, you are at your office, you take part in this game, and therefore you receive four cards. You can give these four cards to anybody you think that increase company's performance. The important thing is that there's no single definition what performance is. This is just your call. So in your team there are those guys who perform really great. 
There are those who perform not so well. But there's this exceptional guy in your team that does great things, and he did such a, such a thing on Monday morning. So you have your four cards, and you decide to give one of your cards to this guy. And you see how glad, how delighted he is. Somebody just appreciated his hard work. And then on Tuesday, nothing special happens. But on Wednesday, the guys from DevOps team did an extraordinary tweak in environment that allowed your team to perform their work in half of the time. So this situation calls for extra measures. So actually, you take two of your cards and you give it to this guy. And now you see how glad he is. Somebody from other team appreciated his hard efforts. Great. But you're not the lazy one, right? You also do some special things, great things, to increase the company's performance. And you did such a thing on Thursday. And you received two cards from your colleagues. And right now you are on the other side. And you felt this special feeling in your gut. Somebody appreciated your hard efforts this time. And then it's Friday. The CEO of the company says, it was a great week. I'll put 100% of the weekly bonus on the table. But remember, bonus shouldn't be expected. So what do you do? You actually will toss a coin. If it heads, bonus gets distributed proportionally. If it stays, not. So you randomly pick some guy. He tosses a coin, and it stays. Bonus is not distributed. Bad luck. But what happens with the bonus itself? Does it disappear? No, it's being actually rolled over to the next week. So you still have your chance. It's not another Monday morning. You receive another four cards, but this time it is much, much easier for you. By the time of your work, while you work, you start to observe special things people do. And one by one, you appreciate them. It is much, much easier for you this time. But again, you're not the lazy one. You did some great things, right? And you received two additional cards. And there's another, fr another Friday morning. But this time, the CEO of the company says the company's performance dropped to 50%. I'll put 50% of weekly bonus on the table. So right now you have 150% of bonus on your table. Again, you randomly pick another guy, he tosses a coin, and it's heads. You hit the jackpot, bonus is, gets distributed proportionally. So these were the simple rules of this game. So I decided to, decided to start a simple experiment. But in order to start an experiment, you, you actually need people. So I went to one team and I explained the simple rules of the game and I asked them to join. Then they voted and they said no. And I was disappointed, why? So I asked them and they thought that actually this experiment is against the existing bonus system and against the company. They were afraid to do it. And the second thing is that they thought they'd need to join as entire team, not as single persons. So I just explained it in a wrong way. Then I went to another team and I said that this is actually not against the existing system, this is just to support it, and that participation is optional. This is not for the entire team. And they asked for a time, and after a while, half of the team joined the experiment. Then I went to another team and another, and with three teams and 16 people, we were about to start. It was good enough to start. The experiment was designed to last four months. It was divided into weekly iterations just to learn faster. And it was made in a fail-safe mode, which means that participation was always optional. You could join or leave at any time. And also, it involved candies, not the real money, just for safety. Let me present you what were the tweaks. So this is the card, how do it look like at the beginning? You can see the holder name, very nice picture. 
issue date and the name of the experiment. And what we started, I started to observe that people are given these cards not only within the team, experiment team, but also outside of the team. So it looked like it has a lot of potential to be anti-silo technique. I said, great, it's a very good, good thing. But people from outside of the experiment didn't know what is the experiment about, not really. So I made a simple wiki page and I put the link to this wiki page on the cards themselves. And it worked great. Then another observation was that people started to write what they thank for on the cards themselves. And I said, great, it gives these cards even more value. Why don't we put special place for it on the cards themselves? And right now I have to present you to Martin. Martin was the only person from his team who didn't join this experiment. He said he's a grown up, he doesn't play childish, silly games, this is not for him. And after a while, after a few weeks, he said, he approached me and said, mm, you know, give me my cards, I want to join it. <laughs> and I asked, why? You didn't want to, what had just happened? And he answers, you know, I was using the cards that I received to thank others. But since they write what they thank for on the cards, that too much value just to waste them. So give me my fresh cards. And I said, great, you can have them. So you see that the cards were given even more value. But there was some drawback. People were very reluctant to exchange their valuable cards for candies at time of exchange. You cannot have a cake and eat it too. But is it actually the truth? Why don't we just stamp the cards at the time of exchange and this way you can still have your precious card and the candies? It was great. It worked. Another tweaks were with the uh, bonus. I remember this is the, what the CEO decided and this is not always 100%. We, at the beginning, we based them on company's financial results, but they were changing too rarely, once a month. So then we moved to number of successful releases. There were two at the time during the week. But people complained that they have no so much influence on it. And then a brilliant idea came into my mind. I said, why don't we hit, kill two birds with one stone? Why don't we put another feedback loop in the system? Why don't we ask product owners for opinions about performance of their teams and use these opinions to set the bonus amount? And it was a great idea. We had two feedback loops in the same system. Yet another tweak were, was with the currency. We had these small little candies at the beginning. Then we tried several different variations. And then one day I asked my beautiful wife, who's here on this very um, spot. And of course, she bought an expensive fudge candies. So I was angry with her. And now I have to explain two things to you. First is that fudge candies are called little cows in Poland. That's why you see cows on the wrapper. The second thing is that every country has its special memory from your childhood. This is fudge candies in Poland. This is probably the same as gulab jamun in India, if I pronounce it correctly, or marshmallow in US. So we can imagine that people just went crazy. They were exchanging a lot of their cards for candies. It was a real madness. So this smart move actually increased fun in this game, but also increased the amount of sugar. And then it just happened that at the end of the fourth month, at the end of the experiment, my mother company, Naspers, which is available all around, all around the globe, introduced a new bonus system. And I was told that I cannot change it. And I was struck. My brilliant idea was just rejected. But then, on the second thought, I looked at the results of the game until now and asked people, and it seemed like that 97%, I can repeat that, 
97% of participants wanted to stay with the game. Number of participants doubled from 16 to 32. But remember, this was a small experiment. 65% of cards were exchanged for candies. And 16% of cards were exchanged between teams. So remember the anti-silo characteristic. People said that they like this game because it gives them visible proof of their contribution, that this is easy physical means of appreciation. It is a catalyst of appreciation. They like that this is immediate. They like, of course, the nice moment of appreciation. And the motivation when you get the card and later when you look at it. And of course, possibility to get the sweet prize. So it looked like the game, as it is now, has a lot of potential. For a small cost, you can have a lot of positive energy. You can discover your own value, but also you can discover what is valued by your peers. So I talked to my manager, and we decided to launch it. So since the start, we had two systems, an official with money and supportive bottom-up with candies. But this time, company pays for candies, not my wife. One year after we started, started we had 233 participants in four different physical locations. And actually, it became part of company's culture. People, when people wanted to appreciate each other, they said, I want to give you a French candy. Then we went through some restructure, and currently we are trying to relaunch it, but this is actually another story. So just to wrap up, uh, the lessons learned is that the game is simple yet powerful. You should start small. Couple of people, couple of teams. You should introduce it in a very soft way. Always op participation, always optional. No force. And of course, you need a motivated true leader to run the experiment until it gets critical mass. Now let me present you the best appreciation messages people receive in this game. So they thank for asking an important question. For sharing a lunch. For telling the truth. For being a true leader. For being earlier at work. <laughs> and just for being what they are. We had so many feedbacks that we actually made a collage, and this is this one. And near the head of the cow, there's the best of the best. And this is this one. It's actually in Polish, but I can translate it to English for you if you want to. But first, have to warn you, it contains explicit language. <laughs> so my question is, do you want to see it? OK, so just for your own responsibility. Twist it. Thank you very much. What are your questions? The money was never there. It was a like um, plan at the beginning. We started in very um, delicate way, like face saving way, not to involve money from the start, just candies, just to see how it was working. And then, uh, it, so it was like to re replace or support bonus system, but then I was told that I cannot play with money, right? With the bonus, actually. So we just finished as the, like a kudo technique, kudo cards. So at the beginning, it was to be then exchanged for money afterwards. 
but then it worked very well because you could have when we were told, I was told that I cannot uh, change the existing Bonex system, right? We had the experiment in which people were getting cards. It, it was nice, right? The appreciation message. And then you could have the candy for the card also. It was another nice thing. Some people even got, were using their candies to thank others. So not only cards, but also the candies they, they got. Yeah. No, they, they didn't have to because we stamped the card, right? So you, you, should, you, could, you had your appreciation message, but also some sweet to make it even more nice. Right. No, we didn't get to this point, actually, right? It was the intention at the beginning, but then the bonus system changed and, you know, we were just blocked to, to play with it. So it... Oh, I understand your question. So it actually depends on the manager, right? If the man manager takes into account these, these cards, it's up to him. But this is not like official. Um, It, he could be aware, because actually at the time um, we were, or we are, uh, evaluating, evaluating people by the peer feedback, but the written, right? great feedback by this uh, official card. Probably we'll do something like this because it's a lot of issue to exchange cars between physical locations. You have to ask somebody who is driving there and giving the car. Right. Electronic. Electronic. Thing. I think this is a good idea. But um, the paper has this, you know, special things. There was uh, a talk yesterday about, you know, the keynote uh, at the beginning about the, the paper is much, much better in many ways. But I wouldn't uh, say that the electronic card ha have no value. They have. But still, if you get this card and you give it to somebody, it's much, much meaningful, far more meaningful. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Take all of my cards that I received and give it to you at the end of the year, for example. Yes. So, um, what, what went wrong actually, and the polls, the, the nation I'm from, have no issue to give negative feedback. <laughs> the issue was with the positive feedback, right? So people often say that, why should I say something, appreciate you? This is your work, right? This is normal. Why? So this actually uh, attacked this issue, this problem. Yeah, so this is up to you, right, as a participant of the game. Sometimes people will get you another feedback, right? The card? For what? Right? So it works both ways. I know the engineers that uh, don't want to talk at all, but they take this card, they write it down, and they see how when the, somebody leaves the room and... 
it works much better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I want more candy. Yeah. Let us explain. <laughs> yeah, or, or probably someone giving you a shout. Did you have any specifiers? People were pulling my leg, like, uh, okay, give the cards, and we'll just exchange cards between ourselves and get the candies. Right? But it was not so often. And since we had this written feedback on the cards, it was really hard to do it, right? We had to have a lot of time to, to do it, to get some, so some candies. Yes. Yes, but then we moved that you, you, have, you can exchange only cards that have a written sentence, right? You can kind of just, hey, have 50 of them and give me candies. Yeah, but it was, so you could observe if people are, you know, trying to, to trick the system. It was not about money, so I have no experience what would, would happen if you, there were money involved. Probably some different things, and I would control this uh, game more and more strict, right? Or if the money is not so big, then I wouldn't do it probably, but I don't, I don't have this experience, so I cannot tell. Right. So the, uh, answering your question, uh, there are very various people, very different characteristics, and you know, everybody is different. And there were those who were exchanging a lot of their cards a lot of their cards. There were those that they were getting the sheet of paper and just leaving it, right? Laundering or something. So it depends. But the Martin example, he didn't want to play at all. And then he was like, I wouldn't say forced, but encouraged by his team to do it. But it took time. So it depends. Still, after two or three years, two years actually, we have de teams that are exchanging a lot of their cards and they're just asking me, hey, I need another sheet of paper, another, another, give, that, give us. They even, uh, when they get the sheet of paper, they are writing the, um, not obsolete, but the feedback they had to uh, give like a week ago. And they run out of the cards immediately and I need another one. <laughs> but there are those who say, I don't want to do it at all. And it's fair enough. So I encourage you to try it. But again, you should start very small and not force people to do it. Just to encourage them by the cards. And it works. Oh. Uh, yeah. Whose idea was it? Was it top down or bottom up? Top down. I've heard experiments like that. So actually when the top manager or CEO goes to people and say, okay, we'll introduce the Kudo cards and you should exchange them, people are exchanging them. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So people don't trust this top-down things like, hey, exchange Kudo cards. Uh-huh, we will. So it took like a couple of months for us to, 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 you know, make it working. And once you do it, it works for a long time, at least in our company. 
I run all the time. Thank you very much and enjoy your meal.